Hi there. Welcome to the From Lab to Launch podcast by Qualio, where we share inspiring stories from the people on the front lines of life sciences. Tune in and leave inspired to bring your life-saving products to the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome to From Lab to Launch by Qualio. I'm Meg, and I'll be your host for today. We're glad you're here. Before we jump in, just a reminder to please rate the show and share it with any of your science or biology nerd friends. We know you have some. Also, check out the show notes to learn more about our guest today or request to be on the show. We're very grateful for all the interest this podcast has had lately. Today, we have Dr. Linnea Fisher on the show. Dr. Fletcher received her PhD in microbiology from the University of Texas and joined Austin Community College as the department chair of biology where she started the biotechnology program in 1999. She is a real pioneer at bridging biotech and education. Simultaneously, Dr. Fletcher joined the first National Science Foundation funded National Biotechnology Education Center, BioLink, and received her first NSF funded Advanced Technology Technological Education Grant to start biotechnology high school programs in Texas. In 2015, she received an Emerging Technology Fund grant to build a bioscience incubator at ACC and several Wagner Pizer grants to equip it, equip it. Today, the incubator is full of startup companies and students interning or working for these companies. Welcome, Linnea. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on your podcast. To get us started, would you briefly tell us about how you got involved with the biotech program and launching incubators? Well, it was about um, 20 years ago, two companies from California opened manufacturing sites in Austin. And at the time, I did have um, a National Science Foundation grant to create biotechnology programs in high school. And I had considered building a program. But with these two companies, there was a reason to start the program. And to do this in Texas, it takes about a year to get a program going. And Texas programs in workforce require that you do an internship. One thing about our community college, it serves the size of the state of New Jersey, and there's like 14 campuses. I started the program at night at one of the campuses because I was educating not only students from the two-year program area, but also from the companies, and they could only come over at night. Later on, I started a day program at another campus with a bond package, and I share a lab with the medical technology program, which is kind of interesting because we do overlap. We always say that my students create the products that MLT students are using. So we tend to learn from each other. At this point, my program um, has about 12 students in a class, no larger than that. So it's, we can really watch students and they can master the equipment they're using. And a lot of the projects that we have in the program are from industry. They're industry-based or they're doing undergraduate research. The one thing we like to do with our students is to get them involved with industry right from the beginning. So that's when I started getting involved with startups because we had a lot of startups in Austin. And it was in my best interest to get more companies on board because then I needed to place more students. So we started to uh, do company projects, especially when the companies got to see our state of the art facility at the new campus. So they wanted to use our equipment. And then they also needed our students because they were very short on workforce. So essentially, what they would do is they would teach the internship course and they would provide supplies and have them work on company projects. And we started to collect data about how this accelerated product development and decreased costs. And at the same time, I ended up on the governor's bioscience council. And when the governor's office realized what we were doing, they said to us, well, you should start an incubator because essentially you're helping startups. But it took about six years because the idea of a 
two-year school, a community college having an incubator was a foreign idea to a lot of the uh, emerging technology um, group, especially um, some of the universities, and they didn't really think it was a good idea. But after six years, and the fact, you'll like this, my chancellor bought them all. So I had a space. So the incubators, I believe in Dillard's, or what used to be Dillard's. And with that happening, we had the incubator started. And as you already said, we had to get two more grants for equipment. And that incubator um, is full, and it is a requirement that students be part of the incubator. So that's how essentially we ended up with the ACC Bioscience Incubator. Now, this idea has been done at several other community colleges. And I should tell you that no discussion of IP occurs because our chancellor does not want to put on another layer of administration trying to deal with IP, which is a great boon for all these startups because they don't have to worry about anyone asking for IP. And the other thing that's really good is the fact that since it combines economic development with education, both sectors are getting a win-win. That's fascinating. I love this symbiosis between industry and education. I think that makes it a great process and improvement in the industry. I also think after COVID, we see a lot of, you know, wanting to bring our supply chains locally. So I feel like this is a great segue into that. How do you encourage high school students and young professionals to get interested in biotech and life sciences? Well, the best approach is to get them involved immediately in what's real. It's not a textbook. It's the lab. And it's not just the lab. It is industry. So having them work on industry-based projects where they feel like they're making a difference is the way to get them engaged. And I'll tell you, the companies in the incubator were really surprised at the skill level of high school students and the two-year students. And once they realized that they could actually integrate them into their labs and working on projects, they started to incorporate them in all different aspects, including even innovation and part of the project development. And that is the best way to engage students, is to get them involved right off the beat at the start in the real world. A textbook just puts them to sleep. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us about the innovation and solutions you're seeing at the Bioscience Innov Incubator? Well, you know, it, it was pretty amazing to me in that at first we had thought that students would only be involved in internships. But that's such a short period of time. It's like 16 to 20 weeks. Then the incubator realized they needed a training program for students. So instead of having them decide how to train students, they actually took the first group of students. They came up with the training protocols to train the next group of students. So then they started to overlap the cohorts of students. And then they thought, instead of waiting till the internships, well, why don't they hire them when they're in their first year? Because then they would get them for at least two years. And, and that way, those students even grew more by doing that. Because an internship was such a short period of time. The other thing that was really good, which is what we were really hoping for, is that the companies, when they graduated from the incubator, because the incubator only lets them stay there from like one to two years, is that when they moved out, then they would hire our students because they realized that two-year students could do the job. They didn't have to have a four-year degree. Now, I should tell you at this point, my program, 50% of my students have a four-year degree. And the reason is after 20 years, the companies in the area now tell four-year students to go get that advanced certificate from a community college down the street. That's amazing. And what percentage of your students um, get hired on by those companies following those internships? Oh, my gosh. Working for the well, incubators. Right now, 100%. Wow. Because we can't meet the demands. In fact, 
we are very similar to programs across the nation. And there's like 130 uh, two-year programs across the nation is that the demand for workforce, even without the pandemic, was going to increase dramatically because of all the advances in biotech. Immunotherapy has really upped the requirement for technicians. Um, the crossover into medical devices and then, of course, the vaccine development. Pretty much there isn't, uh, the workforce need is great in biotechnology. You alluded to this a little bit there, but you've been doing this since 1999. How has the interest in biosciences changed over that course of time? It has increased dramatically. Um, in fact, I would say over the past, year and a half, there's a tsunami of high schools who want to start biotechnology programs that we are trying to help. And the public is more interested. Now, I have to admit, a lot of it is they're concerned. They're worried about biotech now. They're worried about vaccine development. They're worried about how innovation is done. And I think this is the time that we really need to step up and provide that information. And the fact that not because they're interested in vaccine production, now they're looking at everything else too. We need to provide that information. But it's hard because it's still, I still do with a problem in high school where parents still think their child should be an MD. They think that's the only career in biosciences or maybe going to research. But I'll tell you, they don't know what research means. And so there's still that antiquated idea that the only career in bioscience or a related area is to be an MD. And that's not true. There are a lot of great careers. And a lot of my two-year students go on to great career paths. They don't stop at just being a technician. They continue to grow in the company because the company, once they realize how good this person is, they're willing to promote them regardless of the degree. That's terrific. What are the recent trends and needs of the biotech industry that you're seeing? Oh, um, this is a real, that's an interesting question. Um, my center is supposed to be an umbrella organization, which means that it's supposed to be an umbrella for all the emerging trends, which you know is going to be an impossibility. But, and along those lines, trying to keep up with AI, which is going to play a huge role. Um, cybersecurity is changing because uh, with DNA sequencing, the amount of information that's being generated just on a personal level. Um, IT data sets. The data sets are increasing dramatically. And then it's how it's converging with other areas such as nanotechnology, um, marine science, climate change is now being, they realize that there are going to be biotech solutions for climate change. And then if you look at some of the manufacturing institutes who we work with, like Biomade and Nimble, well, bioindustrial, you know now you're, they have simulated leather from mushroom mycelium. Do you know that Stellar McCarthy has a product line with mushroom mycelium for leather purses? I did not, but now I will be checking it out. It's very expensive. I checked it I'm out. Sure. I'm sure. So, I mean, all these different areas, it's all bio-based, which means it's going to be sustainable. And so the emergence, and now I'm working with process technology programs that realize that their training for the oil and gas industry is going to essentially be also applicable to large-scale bioindustrial, which is chemical. Sounds like the sky's the limit as far as the future of biotechnology. It is. I can't wait as we continue to go into, like, the solar systems, what we're going to be able to see. They're already discovering some things on Mars that essentially bio-based, possibly. Fascinating. Um, what are some obstacles or headwinds you see in the, in you see the industry will face in the future? 
Well, one thing is, I feel that industry and education need to be all on the same page. Instead of reinventing the wheel, you know, there's getting from, from point A to point B, a lot of things have already been shown to work. It's just that they don't do a good job of communication. So within industry themselves and education and nonprofits and all the other organizations, instead of thinking they're the first ones to come up with an idea, they really need to do a better job of researching what's already out there and not reinvent the wheel. I think that's going to be true for creating the workforce. I think that's going to be true also for creating products. They're going to be, they're going to have to be better at making deals. That's a great insight. I like that. All rowing the boat in the same direction and working together. Yeah. Great. There is an upcoming summit you're involved with called yes. Innovate Bio Summit. Can you tell us more about this event and its purpose? Right. So we're in year four of our center grant. And after the past four years, the same problems for creating the workforce are still there. And also the fact that as a result of the pandemic and other emerging trends, that there's, it's acceleration of how we're going to be able to create this workforce and meet the emerging trends needed a face-to-face -face meeting and it needed all the parties to be there. And it had to be in D.C. because government needs to be part of this because there's going to have to be things in policy that need to be changed to accelerate development of workforce and what we're going to be doing in this industry. And it is supply chain issues are really important. So we're going to have this bioscience summit. It's going to focus on the envisioning of the next workforce in the biotechnology area. Day one, we have a fantastic panel of experts. So CEOs, individuals who are leading the charge in the industry, and also community college education to share what are some of their best practices and where we should be going. And we're having it at the National Academy of Science, and we've invited government. So there'll be education, industry, nonprofits, everyone is going to come to this. On the second day, we've been preparing state teams of individuals that include industry, education, um, biostate organizations, and nonprofits to work together ahead of time to learn about each other for the purpose of coming up with common challenges that together, if they work together, that they could solve for creating the workforce. 19 state teams are going to come in on, they're going to be there for day one, but then on day two, they're going to work. They're going to work on identifying a common challenge, identify action plans to overcome common challenges for creating that bioscience workforce in their state. And they seem to be really excited about it. So we're calling that right now. They're in the journey to the summit. And then after the summit, we're going to continue the journey because then hopefully I'll get the next grant for another five years. And let's see what we can do by doing it state by state because you need to do that because each state has their own ideas and policies and they all need to work together. I can't wait to see what comes from that summit. That sounds like exciting work to be done. How can others get involved or look to start their own incubators at their colleges? Well, um, one, if they want to know about our incubator, the um, ACC Bioscience Incubator, they can go to the webpage. They can Google ACC Bioscience Incubator. Nancy Lyon is the director or... We also have a report available at the Innovate Bio site. And I don't know, should I share that website or do you share it? Yeah, we can add those to the show notes at the end. Okay. Anyway, um, Google, if you Google Innovate Bio, you'll find our website and the summit. But anyone on the leadership team can help. That's part of our job is to help people start incubators and programs at the community college. 
Do you do that at the high school level as well? Yes. And there are some incubators. There's one in Utah that is at the high school level. Fascinating. Um, switching gears a little bit, if you could go back and tell yourself something about something at the start of your career, what would it have been? It would have been the same advice that I'm giving right now is that you should have looked at all the careers you could have done in the biosciences. And, and maybe you did need a PhD. Now, I'm glad I got my PhD because at the time you, it was easier with a PhD. And I do love lab. But, you know, I was supposed to be, I'd gone to R1 universities and they constantly say to you, well, then you have to stay at an R1 university, which is a research university. You cannot end up at a four-year liberal school or anything. And I realized that because of my interest in education, that I'm glad I went to the community college, but I could have also ended up at a four-year uh, liberal arts school. But you know, everybody's advice, I was listening to one road only. And I didn't realize at the time there were many roads. And it wasn't until later on in life I realized how many roads I could have taken and been totally happy in them as long as it was science. I can relate to that. Um, finding quality a little later in my career myself, I thought in health I needed to be a nurse. So I had started my career there and, you know, moved around. So I can relate to that. Um, last fun question. Where would we find you in a bookstore like Barnes & Noble? You know, I, I love that question. Um, so one of my husband's and my favorite dates is to go out to eat and go to Barnes & Noble. So if, depending on what I'm interested in, um, right now, after going to Scotland, I'm reading history about Scotland. Um, but I have to say my favorite section is either science fiction or fantasy. I so enjoy it because, you know, it's kind of interesting when you, especially when you read science fiction, we get closer and closer to it. Yes, <laughs> it does seem that way with AI and, and bio material on Mars. It all seems like it's coming closer and closer. I agree. Um, so where can folks learn more and follow along with what you're up to, Linnea? Well, I have a Facebook page associated with Innovate Bio. A lot of people like the Facebook page associated with our center better than the website. And um, in fact, when people have some ideas, um, we like in education or industry, we encourage them to post it at the Facebook page because people will look at it and they will reply. So we get a lot of informal conversations that way. So um, I think that's the best way to go myself or pay attention to the website because we do try to keep everything up to date on what we're doing. Well, I'll be following along to see what you all are up to. It sounds fascinating and really exciting to grow this new workforce. Thanks for joining us today, Linnea. Thank you so much for letting me share. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of From Lab to Launch, brought to you by Qualio. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give the show a positive review. It really helps us out. For more information about Qualio, our guest today, or to be a guest on a future episode, please refer to the show notes. Until next time.